Black Op Radio presents 50 Reasons for 50 Years. Why the Warren Commission may be the greatest fraud perpetrated on the American public. Now your host, Len Osanek. In this week's episode, Warren Commission supporters are going to feel the pain. That's right, Ruth and Michael Payne. Just who was this mysterious couple babysitting the Oswalds? Author, researcher, Jim DiEugenio reveals that once again, there's more than meets the eye. This is Jim DiEugenio from Los Angeles, California, and I'd like to share a few thoughts about Ruth and Michael Payne, which I elucidate in my book, Destiny Betrayed, the second edition. I think it's a lone wolf thing. It was uh, the opportunity presented itself to him, and he probably wanted to make a mark on society by suddenly occurred to him that he could. He suddenly realized he had an opportunity to uh, no longer be a little guy, but to be someone extraordinary. One of the oddest things about Ruth and Michael Payne is their association with George de Morenschelt and Alan Dulles. Mrs. Payne, how did you first become acquainted with the Oswald? I met them through uh, friends at a party last winter. This is how, essentially, Oswald was introduced to the Paines, was through George DeMorne show. Almost right after they were introduced, DeMorne Schell stepped aside and went to Haiti, and Ruth and Michael Payne now became the Oswald's best friends. And then uh, saw more of Marina later. I was interested in talking with her because uh, I was trying to learn the language. Ruth Payne seems to have been determined to separate off Marina from Lee from almost the moment they met. And her excuse for this was she wanted to learn Russian from Marina. One of the problems with this is when the FBI investigated Ruth Payne afterwards, they found out that she taught Russian at St. Mark's School for Boys. In just a matter of weeks, Ruth wrote a note inviting Marina to actually move in with her. This is just a matter of a few weeks. After this, they had the picnic with the Oswalds, and then Ruth drove Marina to New Orleans. The thing to remember about Ruth and Michael Payne is that their image in the Warren Commission volumes as friendly Texas Quakers is not really an accurate one. Both Ruth and Michael trace back to the Eastern Establishment and to the Central Intelligence Agency. Michael Payne's parents go back to the Boston Brahmins in Massachusetts. They extend all the way back to the Cabots and the Forbes families. In fact, Ruth Forbes was a close friend of Mary Bancroft. Mary Bancroft said she knew the mother of Michael Payne where Oswald stayed. Mary Bancroft was the girlfriend of Alan Dulles during World War II when she served as an OSS officer. They stayed personal friends after the war. Alan Dulles later on made a very interesting private joke about the critics of the Warren Commission. Dulles joked in private that the JFK conspiracy buffs would have a field day if they had known he had actually been in Dallas three weeks before the murder that one of Mary Bancroft's childhood friends had turned out to be a landlady from Marina Oswald. Mr. Payne, did Lee Oswald's political philosophy at any time indicate to you that he may have been capable of the crime he's accused of. I was very surprised uh, when I heard that a the shot had been fired from the building in which I knew he worked. I uh, thought of him immediately, but dismissed it because it, I didn't think he was that irrational. One of the interesting things that we know about Michael Payne is that due to an FBI declassified document, he was actually making like he was a leftist communist who sympathized with Castro at Luby's restaurant right across the street from SMU in Dallas. FBI interviewed some of the students he had talked to, and one of the students picked out a picture of Michael Payne as a guy who was coming off as a Castro sympathizer. Now, why would he do something like that? Did you ever have a chance to talk about Cuban communism or Castro communism? Did he ever express any thoughts on that? He did mention that, and it was unfamiliar to me, so I didn't uh, didn't take it up. He just happened to mention it briefly, and when it was brought to my attention, I did recall that he had said such a thing. In Eric Tagg's book, Brush with History, 
which is about Patrolman Buddy Waters. It's revealed that when he and a couple of other policemen went to Ruth and Michael Payne's home, they found a file cabinet full of letters, maps, records, and index cards with name of Pro Castro sympathizers. Why would they be doing that? Why would they be taking down the names of these Pro Castro sympathizers? When the FBI reviewed the case, they interviewed some of the people that Ruth visited in the summer. She took a semi-cross-country trip and then came down from Virginia to New Orleans. According to the FBI interviews, Ruth had told everyone she was going to pick up a Russian woman in New Orleans and bring her home to live with her in Irving. Once the Oswalds were formally separated, once Marina is brought back, Ruth Payne picks up their belongings, almost all of them, brings them to their home. Many of Oswald's belongings were now in her garage, and they were under her control at the time that Oswald was apprehended. And later, it was Ruth Payne and her husband, Michael, who became the source for a lot of the dubious evidence that was used to build a case against Oswald. Well, we have been watching the morning proceedings on the television and I translated to her when I heard it that she had been shot. I was crying and she was very upset. Indeed, this was our condition when uh, men came from the uh, police department in Dallas. And that was the first that we had any indication that uh, her husband was associated with this tragic event. To top this off, there's the famous phone intercept on the day of the assassination. Ruth and Michael have both acknowledged what happened in Dealey Plaza, and they said, we know who's responsible. The implication being that it really wasn't Oswald who was responsible. The Warren Commission knew of this phone call, but rather than determine what exactly the pains were referring to, staff counselor Wesley Liebler instead confused the official record and suggested the phone call in question occurred on Saturday the 23rd rather than Friday the 22nd. This allowed Michael Payne the opportunity to deny he ever said anything like that on Saturday. Stay tuned for the next installment as we expose week after week 50 lies the Warren Commission would like you to believe.